Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this review of Sparky Linux. For a distro that has appeared so many times on my channel uh, during the Desktop December series, I've not really reviewed it much, um, not reviewed it for quite a long time. So I'm taking a look at the different versions this comes in, it's quite a lot. So the distro itself is based on Debian, and we have a choice of stable rolling and development. And looking into a stable version, which will be based on Debian stable, there's a fair guess, isn't it? Sparky Linux version 4.6 with LXDE or Xface, or a minimal GUI with no codecs, minimal command line interface, no codecs, no X server. Yeah, that's a fair bit of choice, but for the rolling, oh, there's even more. So version 5 of LXQt, which is the one we have here, or version 5 of Mate, Xface, Minimal GUI, no codecs, no codecs, no X server, and Game Over Edition, which presumably holds a lot of games on it at 3.8 gig of ISO size, compared to about, what is it, just over 1 gig for the standard editions, yeah. And a multimedia edition, oh, and a rescue edition, so I hadn't quite finished the list, but I thought I had. So, yes, quite a lot of choice here. So what is so great about Sparky Linux? Why not just go with a box standard Debian edition? Well, it's more to do with the packages they're giving you. And one of the great features is Aptus. Where just at the basics here, we have the option to refresh package list, safely upgrade the system, or lethally upgrade the system, or just upgrade it. The options to install, and a few different packages to install here. The multimedia codecs. Huh point and click to install multimedia codecs in Debian. Yeah, that's a bit simpler than box standard Debian. The option to remove some packages, fixing broken packages, cleaning, repository. Yeah. Let's look a little bit further at the install. Desktop installer. This is what I absolutely loved when I was doing the Desktop December series. The number of different desktops you can install Oh, and it's not just desktops, we have window managers as well. Awesome, yeah, and the i3. Oh, and ice, and a few more that are gonna catch me out here, so. That's quite a bit of choice. A bit more of an obscure desktop here, Trinity. It's not used on many Linux distributions, or Lumina. Not used on any Linux distributions, to my knowledge. Bloody good desktop, very lightweight. And considering it's a Qt-based desktop, I really did like that one. And if you want to go back to the 1990s, you have the common desktop environment. Very useful feature. But you don't necessarily need that, perhaps for an everyday user. This feature would certainly suit a distro hopper. The Aptus Extra. The option to install some packages that come from other repositories, for example, Google Chrome and Earth. Yeah, so few interesting applications here. Pale Moon. What's that video editor? Ah oh, yes, Lightscribe. Excellent. It's a good choice there. I like that feature. <laughs> the Tor browser. Steam. Point and click to install Steam. Install the Licrix kernel. Licrix is a distro kernel replacement built using the best configuration and kernel sources for desktop, multimedia, and gaming workloads. Install packages from a repository. Type the name of a package you would like to install. You can type a few names separated by a space key. An Office Suite installer. Yeah, okay, so that's a bit bland looking, but that is a bloody useful feature of Aptus. And it's kind of what start separating it from other Linux distributions. The fact you have an easy way to install quite a lot of packages into Debian. Now let's take a look at the memory usage. And I've actually done this from fresh system boot up. So we're using a very paltry 266 mega RAM. And for HTOP, yes, my system has recognized all eight CPU cores. <laughs> eight CPU cores for LXQt. That's kind of like cracking a walnut with a sledgehammer. And memory usage here, 290 meg out of 8 gig. <laughs> Far too many resources for such a lightweight desktop. Another feature I was going to look for was the first time run, which I think initially was under accessories, but now has been deleted. Hmm, no, I can't find it again now. So the, the first time run was doing a package update, and it gave you the option to install additional language packs. 
Okay, well, let's look around at the rest of the desktop. So it is LXQt, as I mentioned. Uh, let's see what version it is. So LXQt, oh, I think that's about the latest one, isn't it? Uh, 0.11.1. Still been rolling along at a snail's pace. The LXQt desktop is an amalgamation between the LXDE and RazorQt projects. It's the future of LXDE and a future that's been a long time in progress. So it does bear quite a few similarities to the LXDE desktop, but one feature over and above here is this little searcher at the bottom. So um, let's try Leafpad. Yeah, and there you go. It, it only searches for applications. It's not quite as sophisticated as, say, the searches in GNOME or KDE. There's a desktop switcher, system upgrade tool. <laughs> this is another Sparky provided tool, but it's a little bit basic. It's pretty much just doing a terminal interface. But we have a message here, your system is up to date. Exiting now, yeah, perfect. That's where the currently open applications will be. And then what do we have? Networking, clipboard manager, time and calendar, and show desktop. Looking at some of the applications that are pre-installed, is there anything much over and above? Now these are all uh, LXQt utilities. The Firefox extended support release browser, Thunderbird for email, and there's Qubit Torrent. Well, there's a couple of other items. What's this? You get and uh, Instant Messenger. That's the full suite of LibreOffice. Clementine, fine choice for an audio player. And why not? It is a Qt based desktop, so you can have Qt applications without drawing in too many dependencies. And it had VLC for the media player, so another fine choice. The system tools, so we've got About Sparky Linux, uptime 13 minutes here. Yeah. Well, I rebooted. This is a fresh boot up. There's a lot of information provided here, as well as uh, quite a few links. So let's click on Wiki to the Sparky Linux Wiki. Seems to be a few different items on that page. Maybe not a huge amount, but reasonable enough. Let's try a Sparky Backlight. A small tool which lets you change the desktop brightness via the panel tray icon. Why haven't you put that on by default? Especially if it's a custom tool. Well, there are a few different tools here. Oh, and there's the desktop meta packages. Ah, first run. So it uninstalls itself. Nice. Absolutely no complaints about that. You only need to run your first run tool once. Internet Archive. Play online old games inside your web browser. OK, well, upon rebooting, we have the backlight there in the system tray. Don't expect that to actually work in VirtualBox, so no, but it, it's interesting seeing it all there. Okay, well that covers most of the features here of Sparky Linux. In terms of responsiveness on opening applications, it's pretty fast. Obviously, first time run of like LibreOffice will be a bit slower than the second time run, so let's try and close that and uh, reopen it. There you go, second time run bit faster. Fairly new version, LibreOffice 5.3. So Sparky Linux adds quite a few useful tools with that Aptus application. Items that are perhaps a bit more tricky to install compared to say if you're using Ubuntu. The desktop installer can be useful for a distro hopper. You don't have to go and reinstall the entire distro just to try out a different desktop. The selection of applications is actually pretty good here. Yeah, there's a couple that are maybe a little bit unnecessary, the icon browser, but realistically, you're probably going to want an Office application on here. So you've got a whole of, got the whole of LibreOffice. You're going to want an internet browser. Okay, they've opted with Firefox. Some people might like Chrome. Some people might like others, but I don't think you can go too far wrong with Firefox. The sound and video, they've installed Clementine, which is appropriate for the desktop. It's light enough and it's not going to draw in too many dependencies, and I don't think they could go too far wrong with VLC. It makes using Debian quite a lot easier, and you've got the choice if you want to go with a stable or testing release. So definitely an interesting Linux distribution. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later. <laughs>